जय श्री बाकी श्री गोस्वामी महाराज की जय and i think you can hear the bells chiming 7:30 pm in thailand very good yes aha uh -huh. i can hear those bells and the bells are na devi hare krishna dhanavad dhanavad now all of my now all of my desires are fulfilled um <laughs> Mine are as well. <laughs> See, it comes from the zone where I used to be as a teen, where I realized Krishna was God. <laughs> Call my best friend to tell him to share the news. <laughs> so she's carrying on the tradition. <laughs> hey, Krishna. So Marusuran Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj, I'm here at your service and the service of all the assembled Vaishnavas Maharaj. How can I serve? Well, it appears that you have a lot of service. Uh -huh. <laughs> But like they say, if you want to get something done, give it, ask somebody who's busy. Um, we'll call Munindra Mohan and Krishna Kanta to come up. <laughs> <laughs> so, when should we start, Maharaj? I think we are started in the sense oh. of the bells are ringing. Yeah, it's five. Uh, sorry, it's six p.m. in India, seven thirty p.m. in Thailand, and wherever we are in the world, joining together, we're actually coming to. be in vila sorry going to be in sri chaitanya sarasat math and mission in brindavan yeah. and we're coming via gupta govardhan in thailand hey krishna uh, first of all perhaps maharaj we can give obeisances to all of the devotees and then we'll just give a little introduction uh, yeah. first So bancha kalpatrubhyas cha kripa kripa sindhu beva cha padita nam pavane vaishnava namo we gave jai to shila guru dev shila guru maharaj our guru varga giriraj govardhan and what the deity is in vrindavan ashishi guru goranga gandhava rasa bihari ju ji jai jai and so, setting the state we're in the kartik mas damodar rat urdhva rat the month of simati radharani yes, maharaj. so maharaj as we speak then the numbers are increasing one by one by one from 38 42 46 47 So it is literally devotees are coming together uh, for the parikrama, which is exactly what takes place today. Devotees come together, arrive in the Brindavan temple, and uh, by the grace of Keshavanandpu, who's sitting beside me, they get accommodation and uh, some something warm for the November or late October evening, some warm bedding, and then. Uh, prashadam and then we come together to uh, understand where we are what we are doing for the kartik parikrama so maharaj as we speak devotees joining us and uh, we can begin by just expressing a little bit that the the kartik parikramas the navadeep dham parikramas really our experience our life with gurudev and our life with the vaishnavas has been very much it's the opportunity for the family of devotees to come together to chant the holy names together and to be in the sweet mood the sweet family mood that guru maharaj and gurudev gave us all and that doesn't mean a sweet family on a superficial level but a sweet a nice etiquette family um with the deep ideals that have given by been given by mahaprabhu and rupa goswami 
which Maharaj are being carried by yourself and being distributed around the whole globe uh, by the grace of the Vaishnavas in the, so many quarters of the world. But the Parikrama is very much uh, the happy time for devotees from every corner and quarter and background and whatever it may be, come together uh, with the common faith, common understanding that we're all the family of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, to Guru Maharaj, to Srila Prabhupada, to Gurudev, in whichever order, that this is our family and we are connected there happily. And in front of them and in front of the deities and while chanting Kirtan, there is always that kind of unity mood amongst the devotees. So we've come together in our beautiful temple, Sri Chaitanya Sarasat Matan Mission, which is in Seva Kunj in Brindavan. And it is a, a special place because it, well, special place for many reasons, but, but because in particular, it came, this property came to Gurudev almost forcefully and through that uh, very famous con uh, conversation of the dead phone, the dead phone speaking to Gurudev. So we are in a, we're in a special place. We're actually starting our Parakramas this year in Brindavan. And we will, just for like further notice, we will be going to uh, Govardhan at the time of Govardhan Puja, which is the 5th of November this year. And so sometimes we start in Govardhan. This year we've started in, uh, in Brindavan. So first of all, we must be very careful about everything we think and do in Brindavan. Our attitude to others, to our attitude to other Vaishnavas, our own family, but the attitude to the, the local people and to the pilgrims and to the monkeys and all other living entities which are in uh, Brindavan Dam. Uh, of which the monkeys may be one of the first that the devotees notice because they can be a little <laughs> intrusive by their nature. So, uh, but we have to really uh, keep that consciousness um, that everything is superior to us. We are here by grace. And although we are on Zoom, we are coming together in Brindavan and actually coming together substantially uh, to visit this uh, Seva Kunj, to make pilgrimage to Seva Kunj, where our temple is, and to the holy places, uh, the high holy places associated with Krishna Leela, Radha Krishna Leela, of course, and of Mahaprabhu's visit to, Mahapra to uh, Vrindavan, and uh, the Leelas of the Goswamis and other exalted Vaishnavas there. So we must be very careful what we think, we must be uh, conscious about uh, it is our um, good fortune and not our right that we've come to participate, to hear about these things. And you see, even in the whole world of however many, is it seven plus billion people? Somebody one day was counting them, had some duty to count all the people in the world. And they came to something like seven plus billion people. But out of them, how many are coming to participate to uh, be in Vrindavan Dham and at this time during Kartik with the Vaishnavas who've got the substantial connection with the Dham. So we are very fortunate to be headed by Srila Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj and a big jai to Srila Bhakti Sudhir Goswami Maharaj who is heading our pilgrimage and guiding us as we need to be guided when we are coming to any holy place. And when we come to devotional service, we always need to be guided. So Srila Goswami Maharaj actually brought the world, the, the principal devotee to bring, to bring the world aware, to make the world aware of Guru Maharaj, Srila Sridha Maharaj. And Srila Goswami Maharaj, until today, very forcefully, strongly, purely, cleanly presenting to us the uh, holy conceptions as given by Guru Maharaj, Guru Dev and Srila Prabhupada. So we've got a very um, strong leader for our devotional journey and we are not tourists. So put away your cameras, put away all your mobile, turn off, turn off your mobile phones and oh, be careful because the monkeys will also steal those mobile phones. They know very well the value 
They see man is holding these things. They must be very dear to, to man. So let's steal those and we'll get some bananas or some fruity, isn't it? Now they don't want bananas. They're too old fashioned. They like the processed mango fruity as a, as a bargaining for your mobile phone. And, and if you have an iPhone instead of us with just a humble um, Chinese phone, whatever it may be, then they know that the iPhone is worth more fruities than, a, than an Android phone. To see how smart the monkeys are in Brindavan. All right, so Maharaj, I think really uh, we can uh, come uh, pass the microphone over uh, to your holiness. We're in Chaitanya Saraswati Matan mission. We're in front of Shishi Guru Gauranga, uh, Gandhava Rasa Bihari Ju, and a little, uh, in little by visual size, the small original deities which were the worshipped in the old Brindavan house just behind uh, our present ashram, that house which came along with this land and property. And the small deities of Radha Rasa Bihariju, which have been worshipped for many generations. So we're in front of the altar with them and in front of Srila Guru Maharaj's Pushpa Samadhi. And Srila Guru Maharaj's Murti is right there. And you can say really in the very closest place possible to Rupa Goswami's Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi Mandir. They're in the corner. It means Guru Maharaj's, yes, uh, Guru Maharaj's um, Pushpa Samadhi is when you look at the temple, it's the right side, which means it's the very nearest corner to Rupa Goswami's Bhajan Kutir and Samadhi, which is so nearby, you can say over the wall, a few meters away. So this is where we are, Maharaj. And we're opposite to the Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami's temple and the memorial building that was um, developed there by Srila Gurudev. And uh, now, we are located where we are, the very center of Brindavan. And let us pass over the microphone to Srila Goswami Maharaj and to give us a deeper view of uh, and a proper understanding of our present position. Hare Krishna. This, um, how we achieve this position, as Srila Madhusudan Maharaj is saying, really by the grace of Guru and Vaisnava, by the grace of our Guru Varga, they personify, embody, and employ these divine principles so that these things become possible. Because otherwise, how can we dare to set foot in that plane? As Srila Guru Maharaj reminds us, you know, the the whole spiritual world is constructed of chinmoy. He once said, it's the, the land of gurus. Doesn't mean there's a lot of gurus there. He's saying, no, everything there is guru. The soil is guru. The soil is worshipable to you, considered to be guru. And then what to speak of everything beyond that? He's saying, so how, how could you possibly take one step into that plane, only, what is it called? Seva kunj, seva, service, out of service necessity. Just as you see here, this Srinasan preparing uh, for us to invite Sri Guru Gauranga Radha Govinda Sundar Ju, that sometimes to do seva, the sevaks, the servitors, may have to step on the asan. Of course, they bow first, put some cloth, but, but out of service necessity, they may do that. Like sometimes Krishna is very tall. To put the crown or the garland on Krishna, they may have to step there. In service, they can. As um, Mahaprabhu's servitor, Govinda, for, for when Mahaprabhu, after um, taking prasad, his um, sleepy, and Govinda comes to massage him in service to Mahaprabhu. He didn't want to inconvenience him to ask him, can you move that? He steps over Mahaprabhu to do the seva. But once he's finished with the seva, he's just standing there. He won't, now that he needs to leave, he won't cross Mahaprabhu. So when Mahaprabhu wakes up, he sees Govinda standing there. He said, what? 
then he can understand that type of devotion in service to me. He, because how did he get there? He had to step over me. So in service to me, he took that step. But for his own necessity, he wouldn't take the. It's unthinkable, out of the question. So, uh, uh, Uddhava, he who certified by Krishna, you know, not to ta priyatma atma yoni or nishankara, not to sankarshan on the Sri Naivatma Chayata Bhavan. President, no one more dear to me, not. Brahma, not Shiva, not Goddess Lakshmi, Takravarti Taka will remind you. Whenever like there's three negatives in a row, na, 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 it's a certain level of emphatic statement. And we will see that appears in the Bhagavatam with regard to Ma Yashoda. We have to speak about Yashoda Mayi at this time. <laughs> but before we do, <laughs> to set the stage for Mother Yashoda, for the entrance of Mother Yashoda. Yashoda be Oluka Ladavamanam Param Ristam Param Ristam Atyato Dutya Gopya. The Gopika Sutta. Krishna is the son of the Brajagopi. Anyway, that Uddhava, when he had a view of Vrindavan, and it was really Krishna's design plan. The Brajagopis are feeling so much separation from Krishna. They can't tolerate the blink of an eye separation. They're cursing Brahma, the creator. So Krishna sends Uddhava with this message that they should learn yoga and how to meditate. God is everywhere. You know? And Brajagopis just become angry at this suggestion. From Krishna, telling God is everywhere. <laughs> what about you? We don't want that God everywhere, God. We want you. As Maharaj told me, this family, the when at Chaitanya Saraswat Mat, when one of Prabhupada's disciples, a lady said, Guru Maharaj asked her to say something. She said, What I like about Krishna consciousness is we're being given a chance to have a family life with Krishna. Guru Maharaj, that touched his heart, the heart of Gurudev. They talked about that for the next 30 years. Right? Always come back. They liked it so much. It, like Guru Maharaj, a direct hit and a soft sentiment. Right? So those gopis did not appreciate this. But Krishna teases them to create this man, this um, sometimes loving anger. To it brings a more intense flow of preem from their hearts. So he, it's not that he is cruel. Uh, he just addicted to that type of love and affection that only comes out under extreme pressure. Right? As Guru said, when you put extreme pressure on love and affection, what does the heart yield? So that Uddhava was sent by Krishna with this message, but really. He wants him to observe them, to see some. And, the, and why we say this, uh, he, he knows the queens of Dwaraka, right? the extensions of Radharani and Brajagopis, of Lalita, Radharani, Chandravali, Lali, they're all the queens in Dwaraka. Right? So unparalleled devotion there. But something more to be discovered in Vrindavan. So that Uddhava, who knows all of those queens and their devotional tendencies, hearts, characteristics, he wants him to see something eye-opening, which he observes, seeing Srimati Radharani and Brajagopis, their response to this message of Krishna. We know <clears throat> the come out from the, the Brahma Gita that Mahaprabhu, these two Zenith points of separation, Kurukshetra meeting, and this Uddhava Darshan. If you read in the Chaitanya Charitamritam, 
it will say, behind closed, after Advaita gives release through his mystic sonnet to Mahaprabhu, you made the whole world mad. There's no, there's no more market for mad anymore. Everybody's insane. Meaning with your Krishna Prem. And then Mahaprabhu, he, right, now what I really came for, I did my public service, inundating the world in Krishna Prem. Now some things I want to pursue personally. The sloka, I was wondering, how did it learn? I learned it because Guru Maharaj told me and to tell others, when you become acquainted with Srila Bhakti Sundar Govindadeva Goswami Maharaj, then you'll understand something about his uh, capacity and his level of appreciation. So he told us, like, Kwa Nanda Kula Chandra Ma, Kwa Shika Chandra Ka Lankriti, Kwa Mundra Murali Rava, Kwa Nu Surinda Nila Duti, Kwa Rasa Rasa Tandivi, Kwa Shaki Jiva Rakoshadi, Nidir Mama Suhritama, Kwa Bata Hanta Had Big Vidim. And Mahaprabhu, after giving release of Advaita, his divine madness started multiplying, doubling, quadrupling, ten times, a hundred times, when he's madly searching for Krishna, as given in this sloka from Srila Rupa Goswami. So <clears throat> then he goes behind closed doors to hear what from Srup Damodar and Ramananda? One of the things, it says, Uddhava Darshan. What does that mean? That he wants to hear about uh, uh, saying Uddhava? No, it means the message Uddhava delivered to Radharani and the brother, it means Brahma Gita. It's like a codified way of saying Brahma Gita. And what is that one line? Yadanu Charity Lila Karna Piyusha Bipru Sakrida Dvana Dutta Danda Dharma Vinashta Radharani saying, if a drop of Krishna nectar goes through your ear and lands on your heart, you're finished. Your life is ruined. Right? Everyone in this room knows that. <laughs> but she means your material life is finished. One drop of the nectar of Krishna is so potent. La goes to the ear, Krishna Karn Amritam, lands on the heart, you're finished. And Guru Maharaj say, today or tomorrow, you're going back to Godhead. Right? Maybe kicking and screaming, but you're going back to Godhead. You're done, you're finished. Don't even try, don't even fake it. Devotees cannot fake it. Once you've had a touch of the Krishna, like you try to fake it to be a material, you just can't. Because uh, Narada to Vyas, he's saying, they'll always remember that in the midst of whatever mundane circumstances they might assemble, that nectar will come back and ruin it all for them. That's what she's saying, but, and, and much more than that. But that is the Uddhava Darshan. That's what... So he's there delivering the message. Radharani and her divine madness seems to be chastising Krishna, right? We're told Brahma, Shiva, like, they're all praising Krishna. Find somewhere where they're criticizing, you won't. Find where the Vedas are criticizing Krishna, you won't. You won't find any place where Brahma, Shiva, Lakshmi, the Vedas, where they're criticizing Krishna, you won't. If you want to find someone criticizing Krishna, then you go, Radharani, Mother Yashoda, she's chastising Krishna. That Krishna who's praised by Mahadev, praised by Brahma, Yashoda's chastising him, um, accusing him of lying. We told him, Krishna saying, I do not lie. They're all liars. Everyone else is liar, not me. He said, no, I know it was you. I saw the your lotus footprints were smeared with butter. I followed the tracks. It was you. <laughs> but anyway, so that type of loving sentiment, Uddhava was stunned to see what level of love and affection they have, unparalleled. So then what is his response? That he's saying like, oh, I want to be one of them. 
like those who voyeuristically envision themselves as super servitors, newly recruited to Krishna country, they envision themselves that. But that doesn't come from Uddhava, right? Because he's a substantial devotee. If you have a substantial appreciation for these things, then the exact opposite will happen. Like we heard, Lalita Saki, you know, the, the least, the greatest magnitude of eagerness for the least seva. Srimati Radharani herself saying, the, the nails on the lotus feet of Krishna are millions of times more valuable than my own life magnified millions of times. There's a connecting thread here. So what does Uddhava say? He's saying, those Braja Gopi, they're so great. I know if I ask them for some of the dust from their lotus feet, they won't give it. They'll think I'm mad that I've lost my mind. He's supposed to be the exalted Uddhava. We're talking, you know, he looks like Krishna. So like sometimes he wears clothes that Krishna used to wear. And so if he's got those clothes on and, and other things factored in, you could, from a distance, think you're seeing Krishna. And so that Uddhava, who's so special, and uh, uncle, he's uh, somewhere between, you know, friend, uncle, like this type of um, love and affection. He said, I know they won't. If, if they'll think I've gone mad. Give me some of the dust of your holy lotus feet. To be one of them is inconceivable. He's saying, I just want to get dust from their holy lotus feet, he thinks, is unattainable. So he has a strategy that if I will take birth as a creeper or a blade of grass, not as Uddhava, but a blade, hidden, hidden position, a blade of grass, a creeper. Then when Radharani, Radha Padmantitadam Vrindavan Dharanam, her holy lotus feet are moving there in the plane of service to Krishna, as are the Braja Gopis. He's saying, then some of the, you know, unknowingly, some of the dust from their holy lotus feet may come upon me. That's Abhishek, Uddhava Abhishek. I'll be bathed in the dust of the holy lotus feet of Radharani and Braja Gopis, and thereby consecrating my existence. So again, what is consistent? The greatest magnitude of eagerness, appreciation expressed for the least position, right? A, an atomic presence in that plane, echoed in the Shikshastakam, Asli Shabbat, no, Ayinanda Tanuja Kinkaram, Paditam Mam, Vishame Bubam Budho. I am Krishna Kinkar. Krishna, what happened to me? And I'm drowning in an ocean of forgetfulness. Kinkaram, Paditam Mam, Vishame Bubam Budho, Kripaya, Tabapada, Pankajastita, Duli, Sadrisham, Vichintaya. Srila Prabhupada like to translate this as fix me up as one of the atoms of dust at your holy lotus feet. That is the proper expression. So why am I saying all of this? What does it have to do with the Chaitanya Saraswat Mat and Seva Kunj? <laughs> That's Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj, Srila Gurudev. Following this uh, heartfelt expression and mood of Uddhava, he thought, the outskirts of town, that'll be appropriate for us. Not in a uh, central position, just in the remotest possible position. If we can get something there, an atomic presence in that soil, then that will be good for us. That's what he's thinking. Right? And as Guru Maharaj says in that Shikshastakam uh, uh, explanation, He's saying, yes, that's the first legit, that's the legitimate expression of the devotee to just say the least uh, position in that plane. Sometimes Guru Maharaj would say, make a cottage in that, he means the smallest possible. 
So he said, but then if that desire is granted, right, you prayed for the least and that was given, you think, then coming in touch with that soil, then the heart is filled with divine aspiration, desires, right? like we were saying, asha purna before. What are those aspirations, the full aspirate? That means in the service plane. So Srila Gurudev, he's thinking like that, the least. So he gets the least, right? And he's happy with that. At the same time, nearby is the Radha Damodar uh, temple, which we will visit. Him. And there, uh, how shall we say? There's a courtyard. Well, I'll put it this way. There's Rupa Goswami's Samadhi and Bhajan Kutir. Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhu is showing just the same principle to keep some respectful distance from there, as is the uh, Samadhi of Kaviraj Goswami. It was considered impertinent by Guru Maharaj and Arlene to go near. Fast forwarding, there's in front of the Samadhi, Jiva Goswami, Kaviraj Goswami, there's a courtyard that includes mostly, almost exclusively, Sahajiya gurus, whose disciples paid something to put a pushpa samadhi there. If someone says, no, I saw one of Saraswati Thakur. Yes, you will, but this is something else. And I'm not gonna go into details of that, but all I can say is this, that Srila Gurudev, Srila Govindamar said, I could not tolerate that Guru Maharaj will be there. His heart could not tolerate it. Right. That's his feeling. Right. So anyway, as, as we hear this about this phone call, there's a phone that's been dead for how long? So many months, whatever. And but every now and then Gurudev like picks up to see any, you know. But it's not working out. But one day he picks it up and I take it as like a surrogate call from Srila Rupa Goswami. And it is who we know, this Krishna Bala Prabhu, um, who's a clothier there in Vrindavan, they own some property. This land is available. And it's adjacent to the samadhi of Srila Rupa Goswami, is Bhajan Kuti but the perfect distance, right? And uh, he has some uh, devotees, you could say from the Western world who are offering him two times, three times or more the amount. And he says, no, I will only transfer this property to Srila Govinda Maharaj, the perfect, you know, um, uh, loving, affectionate. So what is that dignity of the divine servitor of Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami? So through that phone, there, Jai Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. So because Gurudev's heart cannot tolerate that Guru Maharaj will take seat among that row, Sahajiya row, right? Then we're on, and Saraswati Thakur says of Guru Maharaj, you know, the um, Rupa Nuga Dhara, the current of Srila Rupa Goswami is flowing in the heart of Srila Guru Maharaj, right? So we tell you that Rupa Goswami is giving Guru Maharaj this position there. Right. That is the significance of that mat. Right. So see, from the heart of Srila Govinda Maharaj, then Rupa Goswami, where he wants Guru Maharaj to be there, but not in that row of Sahajiyas. So that when we would go to Srila Gurudev's room, you could look, I, I don't know about north, east, south, those directions. I'm directionally dyslexic. 
But all I know is when you look out this one window, you can see the Samadhi and Bhajan Kuti or Srila Rupa Goswami from Srila Guru. Oh, there we are. See? And Madhusudan Mars can verify that. <laughs> so um, that's what I mean to say that Gurudev, you see from his heart, he, he's expressing like Uddhava the aspiration for an atomic presence in that plane. That is granted, but then because his heart wants more, not for himself, but for the uh, glory of Srila Guru Maharaj, then Srila Rupa Goswami, this divine arrangement has been made. Hare Krishna. Madhusudan Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj, verified. The back left window, <laughs> that's where... <laughs> <laughs> That's where from Gurudev's room, Gurudev very happily looking down, looking across, we should say rather, looking across to Srila yeah. uh, Rupa Goswami's Bhajan Kutir first and then just opposite that, the Samadhi Mandir of uh, Srila Rupa Goswami. Mm. And just beyond that, the only other uh, relevant place or the only other uh, Samadhi there is that of Burugava Goswami. Who is a Burgarva? Burgarva Goswami, yes. Yeah. So, are we going to the Radha Damodar temple? As you wish, Marsh, or if you would prefer just to cross the road and come into the Krishnadas Kaviraj Memorial Building, which is so closely connected as it came into Gurudev's possession, or rather, for his service, as he would I say. I want to go to the Radha Damodar temple first. Oh, one, wonderful. We are happy <laughs> to strike up the band. So I think, Maharaj, <laughs> you've got the Kirtan band there with the cartels, Madanga. We do need a Pancha Tattva, two Hare Krishna Maha Mantras, and then let us arrive just around the corner at uh, Radha Damodar <laughs> Mandir. Yes. So, Marge, that's the first time I've ever gone from our temple to the Radha Damara temple wearing my spectacles. <laughs> <laughs> the monkeys would have taken them for sure if I'd forgotten. Yes. Hare Krishna. So, Marge, over to you. I mean, we've come in through the All entrance right. and we've come straight into the main Kirtan Hall, which looks the yes. same to me as the photos of when Srila Prabhupada was there. It looks yeah. eternal. Do we have the picture of the deities? Okay. Hare Krishna. And there are, there's Radha Damodar, but also the deities from where Maharaj mentioned across the way of Kaviraj Goswami, Radha Vrindavan Chandra, correct? Yes, and correct. One, and is there another set? Yeah. Uh, that, as we're looking to the right, there's uh, Radha Madhav of Jayadev Goswami. Uh -huh. 
And then mm -hmm. further right is Radha Chayon Chikan of Burghava Gosami. Wow, very good. And in, and in front, uh, on a separate a little like worshipable trolley, if you like, is the Govardhan Shila worshipped by Sanatan Goswami, the large Govardhan Shila with the imprint oh, right. of the calf's hoof, etc. The footprint of Krishna. Indeed. Yes, from Govardhan where melted. Right, we're told, what is it? Uh, uh, Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vinimayo. So the sol rock can melt, the, the soft can become frozen. All of these, you know, the, the infinite possibilities of uh, Krishna connection. But what I want to say, uh, why this Damodar temple, because this is the Damodar month, right? And the and Damodar Krishna and how you know we think there's so many names of Krishna. we just said them you know Vrindavan Chandra Rasa Bihari you know um, huh <laughs> so many different names Yashoda Nandan Nanda Nandan Devaki Nandan Vasudev Nandan Gopika Sutta yeah. So, but this Damodar, uh, we hear, and this song, though, the Damodar Astakam, begins with this pastime of Mother Yashoda and Krishna, right? Because Udar means the belly, and Dham, Dhamma means uh, ropes or binding. So, Dhamma and Udara, you put them together in Sanskrit, you get Damodar, right? So uh, how that came to be, first we should understand, again, uh, everything to Gaudiya Darshan, that Mahaprabhu asked Raghupat Upadhyay uh, these, like, you know the scriptures, you know Madhavendra Puri. Tell me the best, like Guru said, you know, quality gives us relief from mathematics. There's an infinite ocean of Vedic scriptures, statements, sayings. What, what have you extracted from there? Tell me that. And Shrutim Pare, Shmitim Itare, Bharatamanye, Bhajantu Bhava Bita. Ahangi ha nanda bande yashalande param brahma. You see, yes, the Shruti, that means the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Smriti, the Puranas, the Mahabharata. You have this ocean of scriptures. You say, and why are people coming in connection with them? Uh, uh, you say, uh, Bhava Bita, because they're afraid of dying. You're in the world of mortality. You got to figure out how are you going to deal with that? You can try and avoid it, but it's unavoidable. Right? So they're madly searching. What is it saying? <laughs> you know, like, you, uh, one book says, live a dharmic life. You know, give uh, in charity, practice yoga, do a little tapasya. Hey, have you thought of, you know, there's so many different things being told there, right? And wh why would anyone be interested in any of those things? Because you have to die, right? So why are the devas and the asuras churning the milk ocean? Amrita, right? Mrityu, Mrityunjai. That was the name of Badal Prabhu. Mrityunjai, who uh, con conquers over death. Amrita. Well, so generic, deathly, generic immortality, not the message of the Bhagavatam. Muhuraho Rasikabu, you know, Nigama Kalpatru Galitam Palam Shukamukaram Ritu Dabashamyatam. He but the Bhagavatam Rasamalayam Muhuraho Rasikabu Vibahuka. So he's saying, anyway, all these books, Vedic literature, the Mahabharata, Shrutis, Upanishads, they. 
It's telling you so many things, how to deal with this inevitable, unavoidable problem, how to come in connection with the Param Brahma, right? the supreme being, God, divinity, you know, the personality of Godhead. But I see that Param Brahma that everyone is searching for, the yogis, gyanis, etc. You know, he's crawling in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. So I have one question. What did Nanda Maharaj do? It seems like whatever, they're trying to do something. He's got it. He's crawling in his courtyard as a child. So let's just cut to the chase, so to speak, right? So you understand, in one, this is quality giving relief from mathematics. In one sloka, we're in Vatsalya Rasa. We're in Raga Bhakti, right? So, and Mahaprabhu likes this very much. It continues, but to, remain here for a, a few moments more. So in the Bhagavatam, a similar theme. It says, Nandakim akarod brahman shreya eva mahodayam yashodava mahabhaga papo yasya stanam hari. So Parigat Maharaj, he's saying, it seems to me, I mean, that is incredible. What you're telling us about Nanda Maharaj, and he's got the power of Brahman crawling in his courtyard. This is unbelievable and wonderful. But I see, then he crawls onto the lap of Yashoda and he's sucking her breast milk. It seems to me she's even more fortunate, Yashoda va Mahabhaga, than Nanda Maharaj. He's crawling on her, not just in the courtyard, he's crawling on her and then sucking her breast milk happily. So um, he's thinking like, what did they do? Is there some kind of sadhana they did or some spiritual practices to achieve this position? Um, that's another question. But I mean, the, the short answer is not really. Not the way we might conventionally, conventionally think of such things. So because Vishwanath says, because he realized like this idea of you did some sadhana to it, the drona dara scenario, he said, they're not totally buying into that. When we think about Yashoda and Nanda, Yashoda Nandan, Nanda Nandan Krishna. So he's saying, how to, how can we understand better her position? So he's saying that, um, that Yashoda, um, when Krishna and Balaram are, are little like toddlers, right? <clears throat> they, this is before they can really talk, or like the children we have. In our, they would do things like they grab onto the tails of calves, and the calves pull them through the mud, which is the mud. Why is Vrindavan muddy? From cow dung and cow urine. So all the gopis think this is really um, delightful and trying to see Krishna and ba they're dragged like they look like snakes going, snaking their way through the dung, urine, cow dung, urine soaked mud of Vrindavan. And they come back, they're covered head to toe and cow dung and cow urine and mud laughing all the way. <laughs> so the gopis think that that's really uh, charming. Uh, Rupa Goswami mentions in the um, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that sometimes Krishna and elderly gopi like Jatila will start singing a song and get Krishna dancing. And Krishna starts dancing to the songs of this gopi and Nard is watching this in astonishment. And he can't uh, not, not smile. And we're saying, and Rupa Goswami said, and his smile was so effulgent, it turned the clouds silver. Think about that <laughs> for a moment. Krishna Leela.
what's going on there. So Krishna, they're getting a little older playing and the complaint comes to Yashoda that Krishna has been eating earth, right? And so she calls all the, Krishna is misbehaving. Yashoda calls in Krishna and Krishna, that's the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, they're liars, all of them. I do not lie, but they lie. And the reason they're lying is that we're playing and I'm winning, they're losing. So they're telling these lies to try and get me in trouble. And, and Chris is, uh, you're sort of saying like, all right, then show me, open your mouth. And it was, you could see for yourself. He opens his mouth and what does Yashoda see? The earth planet, all the planets, the Milky Way, the universe, all the universes, all time, all space, all living beings, all create. And, and she sees, as she looks deeper and deeper, it goes into the belly of Krishna. She's seeing deep and through his mouth into the belly of Krishna, innumerable worlds and universes. So see any earth, you see not lying, Krishna. And then Guru tells us that a cat, so they apparently have cats in Vrindavan, a cat went meow, and Krishna became afraid and then grabbed his mother. So Yashoda, we're told, she thought for a moment, her intense vatsalya rasa, motherly affection, just for a moment, it was in abeyance and she's thinking, who is this child? I think I'm his mother, like just for a moment. But to her, that was like a hallucination, these other thoughts. And when Krishna grabbed her for safety, then she thought, oh no, it's my son. What I saw some crazy stuff when I looked in there, you know, whoa, 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 what was that? <laughs> you know, like, oh, you know. So she's saying, but um, uh, so then what, what is, she, oh, so Yashoda goes about her churning, at, she's churning butter and everything. And then Krishna will come and grab the churning rod and stop her from churning. And that is his signal that he wants to suck the breast of Yashoda. And, have, and she's saying, he's very clever. He doesn't go immediately, you know, he can't just stop the churning rod. To, so she's like, okay, she takes Krishna. And while she's doing that, devotees are, you know, especially gopis are multitaskers, the ultimate multitaskers. She is, she's a gopi, right? Gopika Sutta. She's always got milk on the stove in various stages, like we see when we go to Vrindavan. And we're told Nanda Maharaj, you know, he has like 10 million cows. Out of them, you can say like there's a, uh, a thousand that are really special. I mean, they're all special, but there's like a thousand, you know, out of the thousand, there's another hundred that are very special. Out of them, there's another 10 who were told the hundred special eat from the sweetest grasses, their milk feeds the other 10. And of those 10, there's one who's really special, who, and this is according to legend, as we named Padma Gandago, means her milk smells like a uh, lotus flower. So Yashoda, because of reports of Krishna's, um, how do you say, delinquency, that he is breaking in the houses, stealing your, you know, so she's thinking like, I have to supply better here. And maybe that will stop him from thieving. As mothers, you know, they don't want their son to, you know, take up a life of crime, become a juvenile delinquent. <laughs> she's concerned and like, if I have better quality here, at home that might check that tendency. So that milk is what's boiling. And when she realized it's going to boil over, she 
puts Krishna down and goes to tend to the milk. And that makes Krishna very angry. And it also uh, creates a dilemma for the, those who, uh, uh, not really, but a parent, the dilemma for the science of devotion. How, how does this work? Krishna's on her lap, sucking her breast, and she pushes him down to go save the milk. Shouldn't she just let the milk boil over and, and, and just she? It appears that somehow this seva to Krishna is taking precedence over direct. And it's, it's, Takrabarti Thakur will say, this does not bewilder the Premic devotees. They celebrate this. But nonetheless, it makes Krishna angry. So Krishna is thinking, hmm, okay. He goes to uh, get some milk, butter, and uh, Madhusudan Maharaj keeps talking about these monkeys. Apparently, they're very dear to Krishna. And as he is a thief, I don't know, they might have got this idea from him. It's very possible. So he's uh, feeding butter, yogurt, everything. To, and we're told when the monkeys have had enough, like they can't eat anymore, then he's breaking the pots. So, and then running away in anticipation of Mother Yashoda, as we told, she sees, remember Krishna's footprints have very distinct markings on the bottom. Add to that butter, then you're leaving imprints, right? So she can follow these butter footprints of Krishna and figure out where he is. <laughs> and so Krishna's, and he knows she's coming. <laughs> so uh, uh, he's running from her and she's chasing after him. And we're told, there are flowers falling from the hair of Yashoda, but in the Chenmoy world, it appears as though the flowers are following Yashoda also, because they're also a living and personalities. So she's running, the you know, they're going and they're all running, and she is going after Krishna. Krishna's Yad Bibeti Swayam Bayam, fear personified is afraid of Krishna, but we, talk, we know, we still see in India, they put kudzal, mascara, on the eyes of children, boys and girls. And so Krishna's eyes are already inconceivably beautiful. As we hear in the song, Yashoda muhus tumbitam binba rakta darame. Yashoda is, can't stop kissing the lotus face of Krishna with motherly kisses. Think about it. She just cannot stop doing it again and again and again and again and again. All right. So, but that lotus phase of Krishna, now he's crying. Kunti in the Bhagavatam says, Gopyadade, Kriyu Kritagasi Dhamma Tabad, Yate Dushashu Kalilanjana Sam Brahmaksham. He's saying, and this Krishna starts crying. And that's making the mascara run on his face. And by the time you showed against him, Krishna's going like this and he's going, I'm, I did it and I'm sorry, I won't do it anymore. Right? But he's going like this and it's making his face look more beautiful. And the tears are coming down and he's like, and Yashoda, see, and she has this stick and she's threatening him. Unlike Shiva, Brahma, and Lakshmi, they do not do these kind of things. They do not chastise Krishna. So it's a way of telling us, see, in one sloka, you understand, Yashoda is in another plane. When Guru Mahārāj was talking about her once, and, you know, I'm speaking with him, and, and I said something like, uh, <laughs> I, I said, like, what about you like man mana baba mud bhakto? He goes, We left that a long time ago. <laughs> he 
you think, like, think about what you're saying, right? Here's someone who can't stop kissing the face of Krishna. You know, like, manmana bhava, think of me and become my devotee. And so, you know, anyway, uh, or I said once about the servant, what about uh, uh, Patrak and, what's the other one's name? Chitrak and Patrak. Guruji said, Chitrak and Patrak, nothing. Like, think, like, you got to tune in to where I am and which zone is being discussed. And just for the record, they're not nothing. They're the Asraya Vigrahas of, you know, the, the Dasya side of Sakya. But anyway, so uh, Yashoda, she's threatening Krishna with the stick. And then she thinks like he might develop a complex because of that. So she tosses the stick and she really can't deliver on that anyway. It's just a... Uh, threat. So that's when she gets the idea that uh, if I bind him with ropes, tie him to a grinding mortar, then he can circle around that and play. I can go about my different seva and everything will be good. Remember, in the last chapter, he was captured by Trinavarta, the world, you know, tornado, demon, all these different things happening. So that's what she's thinking. And um, Yashoda, you know, takes the ropes available to her and she's trying to bind Krishna. And we're told, Dwi Onguli. It's two fingers too short. And remember also, there's all kinds of gopis uh, and other watching this. Right? So who are they that they get to uh, participate? They're seeing this, talking about live stream, real time live stream reality. They're there seeing these things. And they, it's so more, she gets more rope. And no matter how much rope she assembles, it's always two fingers too short. And so words like adhoksaja are being used. And it's to show, demonstrate to others. That, you know, as Guru Maharaj would say, no amount of finite can equal the infinite. That's what you're being told here in various ways. No amount of finite can ever equal the infinite. You can keep adding more of it and more of it and discover more and, and add all your brain power together. It will always be two fingers too short. Right? But while, and Yashoda is so absorbed in doing this, that from her hair, the flowers, they're falling, beads of sweat are coming down her face, and she's just focused on this seva, right? And Krishna seeing this, and we're told in that second verse of the Dhammadarastakam, what does it say? Murtyaiva yad, but what is that? Anyway, the, the second verse. Anyway, it says that he be, huh? That's the kissing of the face. Anyway, that the ropes cannot bind. Who keeps everyone in the world bound by the rope, the modes of nature? Right? Ropes, conventional ropes cannot bind him. But what is he bound by? the ropes of love and affection from the heart of Yashoda. She conquers the infinite. We don't think of her as finite, but as Guru Maharaj says, wherever the infinite comes under the control of the finite, that's devotion. Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa. So Yashoda, she binds Krishna with her love and affection. That's what he um, uh, succumbs to. Right? So but still, uh, the, and the surrounding houses, the other gopis uh, come to lodge complaint to Yashoda about Krishna's mischievous activities and like breaking in the house early in the morning, letting all the cows and cows, just letting everyone go. 
uh, feeding butter, yogurt to the monkeys, breaking pots, that verse that Gurudev likes from us, you know what? What is it? Nina days, Dadi Matana, Nidra, Nibrita, Nidra, Nashesha, saying that Krishna, he, remember, he's wearing ankle bells that we're told. When he and Balaram, when they're walking around, it sounds, it can sound like kartals. So sometimes if people listen, they hear, ch -ch 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 -ch, as they're walking around. So they have these ankle bells that always let you know where they are. Krishna also knows that. So we're told when he enters the house of some gopis, he's holding them so they don't make any sound. And he's like tiptoeing in and they have some lamps to light. And he's like, blows out the lamp. He's quiet. And then they hear like the sound of someone eating butter. Right. So also Rupa Goswami does some of these gopis, they're asleep. They're pretending to be asleep. But when they <laughs> hear these sounds, they know that Krishna's in their house doing these things. They're very, they're trying not to smile. And they're just trying their best to act like they're asleep. But anyway, these gopis come, but their complaints are in the form of songs. You understand? Like we sing, Yasamati Nanda, Braza Nanda. So, you know. Gopi Janabastra, Hari, Chid, you know, the, all these kinds. So they sang the songs in the form of complaints. And Yashoda is delighted to hear these things. Sometimes when they're gone, she's singing their songs. When she's doing uh, her household chores. But then she makes a suggestion to them that she's saying like, all right, they're all saying Krishna sneaks into our house. He's stealing butter, yogurt, etc., feeding the monkeys, breaking pots, etc. So you said, I said, why don't you leave something out for him? And, and they, they uh, tell her, no, you don't understand. Your son, he likes to steal. <laughs> stealing is his nature. And so much so that Thakurvarti Thakur mentioned in one place that some, it can happen that Krishna goes to a house where um, they're out of butter, they're out of yogurt, you know. And he says <laughs> that Krishna says to those people on his way out, he says, I'm coming back tomorrow with a torch. And if there's no butter or yogurt here to steal, I'm going to burn your house down. <laughs> then on his way out, they have some babies. He goes over and pinches the babies until they start crying. And they're going like, ah! and then that's how he leaves. <laughs> I'm going to burn your house down. <laughs> so, um, so this, we're told, this is the month of Damodar, right? This, it's in the song. The whole song is like that up to a point, but of course ends very beautifully with Namo Radhikayai Tvidiya Priyayai Namo Nantalilaya Devaya Tubyam. But, uh, so, uh, but just what I wanted to say to conclude the other part is that, so in this part of the Bhagavatam and elsewhere, it's being made very clear the superiority of the position of uh, Mother Yashoda. Yeah. Right. There's just no, it, don't think that she's marginally more than others. She's the mother of Krishna. Right. Uh, when one of the last times in Navadvi before Gurudeva, he's like saying a song, and, and I said, and it reminds me of this Muhus Chumbidham Bimba Rakta Durame. He's like in such a divine, sweet mood, ecstatic mood. And he, he, and I said, Mars, what are you saying? He said, Yasomati, she is doing arati to the lotus face of Krishna. Like, that's what he's thinking, right? And we think like, well, but Guru Mahārāja, the lion, Madhu, Rupa, Nuga, you know, 
yes, this is the, the mood of the Madhura Rasa Bhaktas. So once when um, devotees were being newly introduced to um, Srila Guru Maharaj and his line of thought and everything, then so much discussion about Madhura Rasa began to circulate. And sometimes we could say um, casually or carelessly, which really would upset Srila Guru Maharaj. He can't tolerate that. Right. Uh, but sometimes some things would come back to him that were said in his name. In other words, this kind of like dismissing Batsalya Rasa or other Rasas because of Madhura Rasa, uh, which is not the way of the Madhura Rasa Bhaktas. Right? That's like all the flavors are necessary. They're sweet, but there's also all these other flavors, and they 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 must be. And as Guru Maharaj says, you know, all the other rasas are clients of Madhura Rasa. They must exist for all of these things to be possible. Right? Although he does say, you know, like that Madhura Rasa and Vatsali Rasa are naturally antagonistic to one another. In what sense? Mother Yashoda wants Krishna to get a good night's sleep. The Braja Gopis went to rendezvous with Krishna and the uh, depths of the Vrindavan forest in the evening. So he's that way saying, but that's a sweet type of uh, antagonism or um, opposition or competitiveness. So what Chakrabarti Tagore says, Guru Maharaj says almost identically. When Guru Maharaj heard these things were being said in his name, he just shook his head and he said, what is their conception? He said, don't you know that, uh, that when Radharani's first uh, you say, duty every day when she wakes up, she goes to the doorstep of Yashoda and gives her dandavats and, you know, thanks the Lord for Mother Yashoda, without which there will be no Krishna from this perspective. He said, that's her for every morning. She goes to the doorstep and, you know, gives her dandavats there. So um, <clears throat> the position of Mother Yashoda has to be appreciated by everyone. And of course, she later appears in Gora Lila as Sachi Mata and Mahaprabhu is most happily known as Sachinandan. So that deity, <laughs> it's interesting in more ways than one. And this month of Kartik, the Damodar, the Jiva Goswami's deity is Radha Damodar. Right? And uh, as Madhusudan Maharaj was saying, in in that, and if there's a picture of Prabhupada's room, that he, there, there's a, the, they have this thing called Vedanam, which means um, Hare Krishna. And that's Prabhupada's room. <clears throat> you could get a room in a place like this, and you have this little contract. And what it says, in essence, is you have right to do bhajan there for the rest of your life. So you could either pay a flat sum forever. And when, when you leave the world, it go, they retain it. And another Vaishnava could um, do bhajan in that room. That's how it goes generally. So you could pay one a lump sum or yearly or, you know. So of course, Srila Prabhupada, be spreading Krishna consciousness all over the world, they understood they should make some sort of an arrangement with ISKCON so that it would permanently be his room. But from there, when you're looking out of that room, you, when the doors are open, you can see the deities. I mean, you can have darshan of the deities at any time. There's a little place around the corner. When we first went, they would say, this was the Goswami's prasadam room where Srila Jiva Goswami was taking care of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan and other, you know, he was younger 
and, and capable. So he's caring for them. But when you think about, we were told, there goes Swami's prasadam room. Like that that's where, the, just that they would take prasadam there is a mind blowing um, consideration, right? So all, how many, you see where Rupa Goswami, Bhajan, Kutir, Samadhi, Jeeva Goswami, it's a, like what sort of divine pastimes took place there? And where is it established? Near Seva Kunj. Really, the, I mean, the mailing address is Seva Kunj, right? When you look on it, it says Seva Kunj, Vrindavan. And so um, in that room, so that's where the divine grace, really, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, uh, there, that's Prabhupada taking Prasadam in his room. Uh, you see this pot here? That's for drinking water. See the ladle, put the water in there. Very simple. Right. <clears throat> Looks like a, uh, a lamp and you know, candle in the corner. So there he uh, trans began his translation of the Srimad Bhagavatam, of the uh, Chaitanya Charitamritam, uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, originally called Science of Devotion, Light of the Bhagwat, Narada Panchara, you know, many books actually, Bhagavad Gita, all these. Um, because as Srila Guru Maharaj writes in his poem, Bilasatu Riddhi Nityam Bhakti Siddhanta Bhani, he's saying, may the divine will order, Bhani of Saraswati Thakur, his orders, his instructions, play upon our hearts eternally. That's what he says. And Gurudev told me once, there was a, at the press, the, I think, what is it called? I forget the old term, but the man who takes the letters out of the drawer and puts, you know, like a typographer, but it had another name. Anyway, but so you, they're pulling letters out of, you know, A, B, C, you know, or the Kaka, Gagana, you know, Papa Ma, Papa, Baba Ma, you know, Kaka, Gagana, Cha Cha, Jagana, et cetera. You know, you're pulling these letters out. And then he said that the devotees say, the will of Saraswati Thakur was playing upon his heart and moving his hand in all these marvelous ways to do this seva. Right? So that's a, an example there. But Srila Prabhupada would always say, Saraswati Thakur told him repeatedly when he said, what service shall I do? Sometimes you say, I only ask my Guru Maharaj one question. How can I serve you? Right. And his answer was, you're an intelligent young man. Jai, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, Prabhupada Ki Jai. He said, take this Krishna consciousness and spread it in the English speaking countries. And Markina Lok, which means America, he's saying, we haven't gone there yet. So he's saying, this is what he told him. You do this. That's playing on his heart. 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Right? We may not be able to immediately um, uh, fulfill the order of Sri Guru. But it should never leave the heart, the deep heart's core of the devotee's consciousness. Right? So it, it is... Uh, uh, misleading and incorrect to think that, like Srila Prabhupada Swami Maharaj started preaching in 1965. He's preaching his whole life. He organized Ratyatra when he was a child. He's preaching in the 30s, 40s, 50s. And uh, you can see in Vrindavan, he, he, when there's a big fest, when he's living here in Radhadamadar, there's uh, John Masanya. He's sending out invitations, inviting people to come for a festival. And he's arranging prasadam, kirtan, like devotees in the modern time do. He's always doing that. And maybe 10 people come, 15 people come. He, he's going on with the program, always. He does the same program in America. And with very little, little success for a year, 
after year, suddenly, you know, magnitudinal astronomical success. But anyway, he's there in this room. And let's say, if you were to see him at that time, we're called Vaishnavera Kriya Mudra Vigyeha Nobujoy. Don't judge uh, Vaishnava by what you see externally. Maybe you saw he would leave there and go to the nearby market behind Loi Bazaar and buy some cauliflower, eggplant, or potatoes or something, and a little, you know, and then go back to his room, cook something. Right. What might you think? Right. Would you see in that person, the Jagat Guru, the person who's going to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world? Right. Don't judge the Vaishnavas by what you see externally or at any particular uh, time and place. Yeah, it's time and space. So from there, and I've mentioned before, I've seen the, what he typed on. He could not buy uh, paper, new paper, right? In one of his poems, he says, now that I am penniless, because before he was a, a business, he said, now that I am penniless, the only thing that remains of my family life is a long list of names. Once he had no money, no one wanted to contact him anymore. Right? So much for fa familial affection. Right? So, uh, and, and he wrote a postcard to Guru Maharaj. He said, I am disgusted with human civilization. <laughs> he said, rather the animals appear more friendly to me. Although with regarding the monkeys, he said, do not make friends with them. Do not make enemies with them. That was his way of dealing with him. Try to stay neutral. <laughs> but anyway, so those things. I'm disgusted with human civilization. The animals appear to be more friendly to me. And he's there typing on the back of already typed on paper. Bhagavatam, Charitamritam, etc. Then, of course, he prints those books and um, and you can see he puts them in a trunk he prints them in Delhi I remember when I had one I uh, got the one the first one I got was when you open the book it smelled like India <laughs> you know if you close your eyes and smell this book like you're like oh India <laughs> It's, uh, and that's, I can't say what India smells like exactly, but there's this, you know, and I don't mean incense. People go, oh, you mean, I'm not talking about incense. There's just some other divine scent I'm talking about that we also in the, detected in the Shingha right. So anyway, he loads a trunk full of Bhagavatams, few trunks of Kartals, Mridanga, and we know goes on the Jaladuta, the water messenger ship saying we carry India's message of peace and goodwill has two heart attacks on the way over and you think about that Krishna what is it with Krishna I hear he's so elderly at the time he just wants to uh, um, um, fulfill the order of his Guru Maharaj does he really need to have two heart attacks on the way over? The drama of Krishna, what does it say in the Bhagavatam? When gopis, you could say after millions of lifetimes, in some instances, finally get the, the, to answer the flute call of Krishna. And what does Krishna do? He rejects them. And tells them, this is improper, you should go home. Right? And the brothers go, they start, they bow down their heads and start crying, and, and the tears are drenching them. And why? Because they know 
Okay. Krishna is uh, purchased by Prem. They know that. How could they not know that? After all these lifetimes to achieve them, that Krishna is purchased by Prem. He can't resist Prem. Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa. And they're being rejected. So what are they? They don't think like, we're gopis born in the... No, they're thinking like, we don't have any love and affection for Krishna. No prema gandasti drapi me haro. We don't have a, scent, a drop, a scent of the fragrance of Krishna prema, what to speak of a drop. What is the proof? That Krishna is rejecting us. He can't, he, prema is irresistible to him and he's sending us away. So they're crying and the tears are, and the description is there and it's all of their mask, everything drenching them. But as Guru Maharaj said, with the, according to the Madhavendra Puri sloka, if you say, after all of this, you can honestly admit that you do not have any love and affection for Krishna. You are not Krishna conscious, but you have no other shelter. You're not going anywhere. Krishna is reject, rejecting them. What do they do? They're not going anywhere. Right? <laughs> And as Guru Maharaj said, then you may be a devotee. So Krishna, he's all the, putting the maximum amount of pressure on love and affection, rejecting them. And they're crying and realizing we're not actually devotees. We lied to everybody. We left our husbands, our families, our children. For what? It's all a show. We're a fraud. We're not real. We're imitationists. That's what they, that how they think. And then, of course, this sort of heat generating, you know, explosion from their hearts. That's what Krishna is addicted to. And that's why he does these things. So you would think it would be enough. The problem gets on the boat, then heart attack in the middle of the ocean. And what does he say in his diary? Uh, now when they're out, that, well, you can see water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, only ocean. And he's saying, maybe like, I'm so far from Vrindavan and Radha Damodar, my worshipable lords, Radha Damodar, Radha Govinda, Radha Madan. He starts naming the deities of Vrindavan, but he does mention Radha Damodar as well. And he's saying, now I must depend exclusively upon their mercy so far from Vrindavan. He doesn't say, uh, I'm so far from India and I'm homesick. He said, I am so far from Vrindavan. I'm feeling separation from Vrindavan Dham and Radha Damodar, not from my family and friends and countrymen and, and uh, motherland. I'm feeling separation from Vrindavan and Radha and Damodar and all of those deities. Then he says, but daily I am relishing the nectarine of Chaitanya Leela, which is the source of my all vitality. And, and then, so of that Chaitanya Taritamri of Kaviraj Goswami, and then, of course, we know he goes to America, and there, the Markine Bhagavata Dharma, he inundates the world with Krishna consciousness, right? Fulfilling the order of Saraswati Thakur, the prediction of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and none, none less than Mahaprabhu himself. Right? And all from this. Uh, more, modest is uh, uh, even Spart I don't know what the word is. Spartan mo is that from that little room in the Radha Damodar temple? But how much power is there? Vilasatu Riddhi Nityam Bhakti Siddhanta Bani Mahadad Bhuta Pavana Shakti Padam Pranam Amishada Prabhupada Padam Hare Krishna. And there in the just around the corner is the um, Samadhi of Diva Goswami, as we told, 
and Krishna is Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu, the author of Sri Chaitanya Charitamritam. Uh, and in the courtyard, the Samadhi and Bhajan Kutir of Srila Rupa Goswami. Yeah. Madhusudan Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, as we are at the temple, can you just guide us to that Prashadam hall or the Prashadam room? Uh, it's, um, I mean, if we could see a picture, it just looks like a passageway between two rooms. It's, I mean, I'm just saying when, when we would go there, uh -huh. it, it's not marked in any special way. And, may, and now we may be walking through it without even knowing. Uh -huh. Okay, Marsh. Because things have changed since, you know, the 70s. <laughs> Indeed, yeah. <laughs> but they do say, the pujaris in the temple do say that the room to the left, when you're looking at the deities, on our left, there's a room just to the left on the... That's prince. it. That's it. That's the one. Ah, oh, that's the one. Okay, Mark. That's where it's located. It's super. Right. If you're looking at the deities, it's on the left-hand side, if you could go through there. So I it, wondered. That's yeah. the first time I've heard that, Marge, and I'm very nourished to know it. Yeah. As well as everything else, Marge, you said, of course. So there's so much to be said about Kaviraj, Jiva Goswami, Kaviraj, Go, Rupa Goswami. I think we should address that tomorrow. <laughs> Maharaj, wonderful. And as I mentioned at the beginning about how the Parikramas organized by Gurudev, Guru Maharaj, and over the years since then, that really it's bringing the devotees together in that like, happy, unified, devote, uh, you know, Sankirtan spirit. Maharaj, you've conveyed that very sweetly and beautifully amongst all of the assembled devotees. And we've all, more than uh, up to 90 we were at one point, plus however many are sharing each, each view. Um, yeah. Many of us, we squeezed into Srila Prabhupada's room when we came into the different <laughs> places with you, Maharaj, and uh, nourished today in that family of Srila Gurudev and Guru Maharaj and Srila Prabhupada, as we have heard. Yes, yeah, so because tomorrow's Naratam Thakur's disappearance, there's a way we can also connect Kaviraj Goswami, Rupa Goswami, it's, It'll all, you know, the infinite uh, circular, any entrance points. Okay. So, Marj, would the devotees of Chiang Mai then like to chant what you may wish them to chant, Marj, at this point? What would you wish them to chant? Uh, Okay, we've got a unanimous Jai Radhe Jai Krishna vote from this side of the of the room, Maharaj. They're all together. Yeah. Yes. And this from Kesha and Andhra Prabhu, who's also guiding us always and helping the devotees in Vrindavan, and Munindra Mohan Prabhu behind was calling this. Hare Krishna. Perfect. And composed by Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. Yes whose deity is there, whose samadhi is there, whose temple is just opposite. And yeah. as you mentioned just now, the Chaitanya Chariots Amrits are giving the life, the nourishment to Srila Prabhupada on his journey across the Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs>
Bancha kaupatrubis cha kripa sindubi eva cha patitanam pavanevyo vaishnavevyo namo namaha. Hari Hari. Jai Srila Bhakti Ranjan Madhusudan Maharaj ki Jai Kesvananda Prabhu and the Vilagovinda Bhakti Vrinda with Manindra Mohan and Krishna Kantadiri Shanti Moyi Hare Krishna Madhuranand Prabhu Sri Hari Prabhu and Brazil Dandavat Anindita and Jai Shekhar Prabhu Dandavat Nama Priya Didi Dandavat Selection Didi is here and the Siberian Tomsk Temple Jai Subhada Kleshagni Subhada Moksha Laguta Krit Sandra Nanda Visheshatma Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa et al. Sachi Devi and Pandita Dandavat. Krishna Priya Didi, Dhanavat, Kaili Kadamba, and her associate, <laughs> Avinava Sundar Prabhu, <laughs> her assistant, and Govinda Land, Dhanavat to all the devotees there. And, oh, Govinda, and next to Govinda Land, Govinda Dham, Leela Sundari Didi, Dhanavat, <laughs> Rupa Vilas Prabhu in the Philippines, Dhanavat, Chaitanya Nitai Prabhu in Vrindavan, Dhanavat. Sri Lake Didi, Dandavat, Hare Krishna. Dhanan Jai and Chaitanya Mohi, Dandavat. Jai Srila Bhakti, Sevan Rishikesh Maharaj, Hare Krishna. Probably in um, Abhazia. Right? Tunga Rasa Didi, Dandavat. Jai Srila Bhakti, uh, Ashrai. Ashrai Dandi Maharaj, at Kiev, Dandavat. Bhakti Vijay, Srila Bhakti Vijay Trivikram Maharaj, is perhaps at the Krishna Shakti Ashram. Right? Hey, Krishna, is our Dandavats to you. Udaran Prabhu Dandavat, Malini Didi and Ors Dandavat, Subhashini Didi Dandavat. This is Janavi. Janavi. Ni hao, she's in China, Dandavat. <laughs> Narayani Didi, made a life, Dandavat. Hare Krishna. Sandeep and Maheshri, I should mention, my Brajamandal Parikrama always begins at, in New Delhi <laughs> at the house of Sandeep and Maheshri. I go there first, get their prasad, they talk some sense into me and prepare me. She's our Matura Basi, so she gets me ready to go to Vrindavan after a little prasad. Hey, Krishna, Sushmita Didi Dandavat, she's in China. Jai Shri Didi and Sali Dandavat. Who's in China here? Hare Krishna, there's Indumuki Dandavat. Jai Shri Didi. Jai Shri Dandavat. Hare Krishna. 
Beautiful. Say, and Hainan. That island. Oh, okay. So that's where Tanu Shri is. Also. Tanu Shri. Tian Tian. I'm saying Tian Tian's name is Tanu Shri. <laughs> anyway, Praneshri Didi Dandavat, Elina, she is the mother of Jamuna Dandavat, Jai Govinda Prabhu Dandavat, Chandra Kanti and Sudevi Dandavat, <laughs> Hare Krishna Sudevi, Jai. Alexi, Alexi, Dandavat, Ajita Krishna Prabhu and Kisami Dandavat. Shanti Moi Dandavat, Hare Krishna, Dhananjai Prabhu and Rasa Dandavat, another Das Anu Das, Kum Kum Didi Dandavat, this Nikita and Rasa Dandavat, Gorachandra Prabhu Dandavat, here, Vanessa, Vanessa Dandavat, <laughs> Jamuna here, Andresa Dandavat, Navajovana. That's it. I like the spelling there. Dandavat. <laughs> Jai Srivat Bhakti Vigrahan Nyasi Maharaj Dandavat Lila Sandra Prabhu Dandavat Suchitra Didi Dandavat. Is this everyone? Huh? Gunali Dandavat Nadia Priya Dandavat Ajitasha Didi Dandavat Supriya Dandavat Hari Namananda Dandavat Prafula Krishna Prabhu Dandavat. Hare Krishna. If I, uh, Pavan. <laughs> so if I missed anybody, please forgive me. But as oh, Madhusudan Maharaj, huh? That's uh, Sri Nimba's teacher, Farah. Oh, okay. Who was Farah here this Farah morning? morning? All right. All right. She's next in line for some mercy. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. And Seva Rupi, Seva Rupa Didi. And her little associate there in South Africa, Dandavat. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Sundar Prabhu, Sundar Ananda. Bancha Kalpa Tribhyasta, Kripa Sindhu Bevata, Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha. My Dandavats to one and all. Hare Krishna. Narayani, a day to life, Dandavat. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Make it simple. Uh-huh.